heaven and of which I Paul became a minister. Amen. Let us bless each other. Be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. With the eternal blessings, let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Thank you. And thank you for the graceful praise from the choir, the first worship choir. Every time I stand on the pulpit, I can see that all of our hearts open through the choir. The Lord holds on to us, that is why we can have true peace. God leads us in all of our steps. That is why we can become and have true peace. God has solved all of our problems through the name of Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you guys may have and take the path of victory with the name of Christ. Last week, we received the word, view everything with the eyes of the gospel. To view everything inside of the gospel, the first mission that we must have is go inside of the gospel. What must become our first priority is going inside of the gospel. What is urgent right now is for us to go inside of the gospel. And we must always confirm, am I inside of the gospel or not? The more we go inside of the gospel, we have our eyes open, and it is the eyes to see the gospel. And whenever we view everything with the eyes of the gospel, no matter what the circumstances may be, we are not hindered. If people have their uh, faith, faith inside of money, then if they have no money, then they have no faith. If the root of our faith is our health, then if we are not healthy, then we have no faith. If the root of our faith was our knowledge, then if we do not have knowledge, then we we cannot believe. So what we must first possess is view everything inside of the gospel. Then no matter what the circumstances or the environments may be, we are not hindered. All of the people in the Bible, their environments and their situations were not all that great. But you're able to see that those people held on to the gospel and they became the people that the world cannot contain. They viewed everything with the eyes of the gospel and they held on to the gospel. Then today morning, why must be the gospel? Why must it be the gospel? And today's passage is the letter that was sent from prison. So there were incidents that was what was arising in the church churches. So this church of Colossians was made through all the uh, enduring all of the wars. And through Paul, they were evangelized. 
그게 해시만 에라부 에바부라가 세운 교회가 바로 골로새 교회. And there was a change of heart of a papyrus, and he, this person raised the church. But to Paul, he heard a very sad news that there were there were unhealthy mysticisms and other things that was arising in the church. And there was a stoicism that was arising inside of the church. And to that Colossian church, Paul sends a letter. We are colonized by Rome, and we hold on to the gospel. And inside of the persecutions of Rome, we are holding on to the gospel, are we not? And from the attacks of Jewish people, are we not holding on to the gospel? So know the gospel that you're holding on to. And it's talking about the imperativeness of the gospel. And this book of Colossians is talking about the excellence of the gospel. And through the passage, God is telling us why it must be the gospel. Then first, why must it be the gospel? With the powers of mankind, we cannot solve the spiritual problem. Mankind are spiritual beings. So to the spiritual being, the problem comes, and that problem is a spiritual problem. Before physical problems, what comes is a spiritual problem. Why does this spiritual problem come to us? In Genesis 3, we were separated from God, and we were enslaved by sin, and we were seized by Satan that is unseen to our eyes. That's why to the spiritual being, this spiritual problem has come to man, the mankind. And with the strength of mankind, we cannot solve this problem. A spiritual problem is not solved through the worldly knowledges. I'm not saying that we do not need knowledge. I'm not saying that you, we do not need our efforts and your characteristics. No matter how diligently we live inside of this world, we cannot solve this problem. No matter how great of a characteristics we may have, we cannot solve this spiritual problem that one day come to us. Yes, there could be a benefit to us. There could be a benefit for the worldly knowledge if you have him, but that cannot solve the spiritual problem. And right now, it is the age of advanced science and the age of universe will open and the medical sciences are arising but they cannot solve those sins and curses. And there is a message that we all want to listen to. There is a message that all people want to listen to. What is that message to you? A message, a message that is comforting to you? Yes, that's good. And things will be great. And so, stiffen up. 
Or are you listening to the message that is a hope to you? Oh, you can do it. Oh, you can do anything. Yes, that's all good. Or uh, do you want the message that gives you joy? Or do you want a message that where you can embrace the people who are neglected? Yes, those are all good. If you do it, it will work. Yes, that's all good. And give, giving them motives, that's good. And the messages that give us hope, yes, that's all good. Inside of the age where there is no joy, giving us joy, that's all good. But those are the things what people want. But if you truly know what the problems, why the problems are arising inside of our lives, then we know that it must be only Christ. If the gospel is not placed inside of us, we cannot solve the problems of our family line. If it is not the gospel who is Christ, we cannot solve the problems that are arising inside of our prosperities. Without the true gospel, we cannot have true peace or true rest in this world. And if you see in Acts 3, you can see a crippled man from birth. For him, he wants to stand up. And he wants money that is thrown at him and so that he can be fully fed. But Peter didn't give him the answer that he wanted, but he gave the fundamental answer. That is why Peter said, Silver or gold, I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. It wasn't, he didn't give the answer to the crippled man where the crippled man wanted, but he gave, he saw the fundamentals and gave the answer. Parents love their child. But no matter how much they love the child, they cannot solve the problems that are coming their way. It can be a little bit of help in a physical manner, but they cannot help the fundamentals. Even parents cannot solve the children's spiritual problems and their sufferings. But if the gospel is placed inside of them, then it is over. That is why we are saying, let's open up the age of the three-day weekend. That is why we are saying, let us restore the three courtyards inside of the church. We are saying that let us imprint this gospel to our, our children, to our prosperities while they are young. If you do not need the gospel, then God didn't have to... God did not have to come to this uh, pitiful land. If the gospel is not needed, there is, was no need for Christ to receive suffering and be crucified on the cross. If you do not need Christ, then uh, actually we do not need a church. If you see in religious, 
all the other religions, they give you these messages that you want to listen to. And they speak the words where they give you hope and they give you motives. If it is not the gospel of Christ, the church is not needed. What do mankind truly need? They must meet God. What is the things that the mankind truly need? We must be set free from sin. What do mankind truly need? They must be set free from Satan. People are asking for other things because they do not know the spiritual things. Because they were dead in the transgressions and sins, they only know the physical things. But what the true problem is that they are separated from God and caught by Satan. And that is why we are able to see, if you know this problem, we are able to see why we need Christ. There is no other way except Christ. If it is not for Christ, we cannot be set free from sin and Satan. Without Christ, there is no way for us to enjoy true peace and true rest. With our characteristics, we cannot break free from our faith. With the powers of mankind, can we be set free from the long-standing problems? With the strengths of mankind, can we block sin? There is no way. That is why God has sent us Christ. That is why for us, it's not just Christ. When we have only Christ, that is when the forces of darkness crumble down. And I believe that when you hold on to why you why it must be only the gospel of Christ, all the forces of darkness will crumble down, and all of the values inside of your lives will be restored. Paul wanted to let the churches of Colossians know the power of Christ. Because they have lost hold of this, that is why all of these other ideologies have come inside of that church. Then what is the true value of the gospel and the power of the gospel? If you see in verse 16 today, it says, For by him all things were created. Who is the Christ that you guys believe in? You guys believe in Jesus, but who do you believe him as? What kind of Jesus do we believe in? Are we believing him in some kind of as some kind of pioneer? Or do we just know him as some kind of one of the priests? Religious leaders say good things and benefit things. Do we believe Jesus as that person? So today, God is asking us, who is the Jesus that we believe in? In today's passage, it says, He's telling us he's not some kind of pioneer or some kind of religious leader. He is the creator God. When God created the world, he was with him. A word became flesh and was with us. And great knowledges were with us. So the Christ that we believe in is the Creator, God, Christ. It's not the Jesus that the world is, speaks of. It's not a, some kind of religious leader. 
그 창조의 역사로 우리를 붙들고 계시는 창조주 그리스도인 것을 말씀하고 있습니다. He is the creator God and he is with us as the creator God Christ. And who is Christ? And he keeps on speaking to us. It says in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or domain, uh, dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Who is Christ? It's the Christ who has all authority of heaven and earth. In Matthew 28:18, he says, All authority of heaven and earth is given to me. You're able to see that Jesus is the Christ who has all authorities. So he's telling us, he's asking us, who is the Christ that you speak of? Who is the Jesus? You guys speak of Jesus. But who is the Jesus that you speak of? And you say that you believe and rely on Jesus, then who is this Jesus that you believe and rely on? So he's telling us, believe in the Christ that is the Creator God and who has all authorities of heaven and earth. In Genesis 3.15, he has given us the pro promise and he has come as flesh to fulfill that promise and now he is with us through the Holy Spirit. He has all authorities of heaven and earth. So it was the mystery that was already proclaimed in Genesis 3.15. The offspring of woman will crush the head of the serpent. And the saying is, Christ will come and crush the head of Satan. What is what fills the heart of God? What is the word that God truly wants to tell us? There was a message that God wanted to give to the church of Colossians. That you guys are the mankind that is falling into spiritual death. And we are all grown weary inside of our lives. And we are inside of the suffering where the prosperities are crumbling down. And to solve those problems, it is only the offspring of woman, Christ. That is why God told Adam that the offspring of woman will crush the head of the serpent. The only one who can solve the problem of Satan, fate, and curses is Christ. And that is the mystery of Christ. But when people did not believe in Christ, there was nothing at a loss to them. And that's the time of Noah's flood. And that's when, through Noah, God tells all of mankind. He told a way to live. And that is the only way, the unique way. The only way for them to live was the ark. No matter how lacking you may be or how weak you may be, if you go inside of the ark, you will live. That was the mystery of God. Just like the ark, only Christ is the only way for us to live. God is not just, uh, Paul is not speaking of some kind of history. He's not speaking of some kind of religion. He's saying, do not lose hold of the true gospel. Why is he telling us not to lose hold of the gospel? We haven't read today in Colossians 2, the mystery of God is Christ. That is why we must not hold off, uh, we must not lose hold of Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you place this Christ inside of your hearts. The mystery of God is Christ. When Adam was separated from God, what was given to him was the promise of Genesis 3.15. And in, during the Noah's flood, God told Noah, 
and during the time of Exodus, told them the mystery of sacrificial offering and Emmanuel. And Peter knew that and confessed that Jesus is the Christ. And to that Peter who was holding on to uh, who confessed that God gave him the blessings to that we may all enjoy where you become the rock and the gates of Hades will not overcome you and you will have the keys to heaven. Inside of God, there is all of the mystery. Inside of Christ, there is all of the mysteries of God. That is why we must not lose hold of this. The ideologies that are inside of the church, those are not the, what we must hold on to. It is only Christ, so only we must only hold on to Christ. Satan also has mysteries. Satan wanted only one thing from Job. Satan uh, discarded or uh, attacked all of his belongings, his children, and his relationship. And Satan whispered to Job, Are you still going to believe in God? And he wanted to make Job have unbelief. But Job didn't, Job didn't fall into unbelief. And if you see that he, I, and they get, shall I return? So the one who gave birth and those, the one who takes away my life is Christ. He didn't just say, oh, let me endure this. Job believed that the Christ who has solved all of the problems will come. And he had the faith that he will come out of his body and meet God. It says, And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. So he came to a conclusion, the answer of Christ. I really hope that all of our Hana Church members become the people who come to the answers why it must be only the gospel. What does Paul want to speak of inside of the prison? The fact that he's in prison and he's writing this letter, it is a thing that where other people could look at and scoff at. How can a person that is in prison give comfort to the people who are outside? But to the eyes of the people, he was in prison, but Paul had a heart and what he wanted to relay to the Colossian church. There was something that he really wanted to relay. What was that? that Christ is the Creator God. And instead of that Christ, all of authorities are given. And that was the things that Paul wanted to relate to the Colossian church. He knew the mysteries. And he knew the problems of the field. He knew the problems of the church. That is why with Christ, it is enough. And Christ is complete. Paul wanted to relay this to the Colossian church. The philosophies or the ideologies, that's not it. 
some kind of unhealthy mysticism that you guys are doing, that's not it. And the things that you are trying to hold on to, that is not it. Only Christ, it is enough. With only Christ, it is complete. And that is why Paul's heart was on fire to, so, to relay this. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you come to the answers inside of Christ at this time. And it's telling us in verse 20. It says, and through him to reconcile to himself all things. And making peace by the blood of his cross. It says, making peace by the blood of his cross. Paul first thought that being crucified on the cross, those who are crucified on the cross were cursed. Because at that time, when they uh, wanted to kill this person, Oh, some kind of and that is why uh, cr being crucified on the cross or being nailed to the cross was to the people who are cursed and Paul was there even when Stephen was being stoned to death so Paul even got a permission so that he can kill the people who speak of Christ. And Paul was going to the way to Damascus and he met Christ and Paul asked, Who are you? And it's the Christ, I am the Christ that you, whom you persecute. And Paul realized that through the cross that he was he has received salvation. And this was the confession of Paul. I boast about the cross. Besides the cross, there's nothing for me to boast about. There is nothing else for me to boast about except the cross. On that cross, through Christ, has all of our original sins been solved. That is why there is no other words for us to speak of except the cross. And on that cross, God is telling us, making peace by the blood of his cross. And we are able to really enjoy that we have having peace inside of the relationship with God. And he has set us free from sin and death. What does it mean that he has rescued us from the do dominions of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves? He's telling us the, our background. Christ crucified on the cross and resurrected. He's with us. That is why in 1 John 3, 8, the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And this is the power of the gospel. And I really hope that you guys come to the, know the value of this gospel. What is our background? 
The throne is our background. Our citizenship is in heaven. Because our citizenships are in heaven, that is why wherever we go, angels are with us. And enjoy this wherever you go. With the power of the power of Christ, we are set free from darkness, and now our citizenship is in heaven. Our background is the throne. If it's in verse 14, it says, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. We have re received redemption, the forgiveness of sins. It's telling us that we have our sins forgiven. So on the cross, all of our problems of our family line and our problems have been solved. And after that, he says something more amazing. If you see in verse 22, let us read together. He has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Hallelujah. We didn't just have our sins forgiven. Through Christ, he has presented us as holy and blameless. Are you guys truly holy? There are many things that arise inside of our lives, and we lie a lot. But in today's passage, through Christ, not just solving our um, sins, but it says He has presented us as holy and blameless and above reproach before Him. So there is nothing that Christ cannot do. We do not live just for us. We have become the children of God by Christ. And God has called us as those whom He loves. And He has called us blameless. And really enjoy this day by day. Inside of Christ, we are blameless. And that is why whenever we treat others, we must know that they also too are inside of Christ and blameless. If I, through Christ, receive grace and is blameless, then the believers that are with us are the same. So we must not condemn each other. Really become the background of prayer for those people. In on the Wednesday service, Pastor Kim mentioned this. Are you hearing all of the unbeliefs that the believers are saying? Why did God allow you to hear those words? Why did God allow you to see those things? You must become their background of prayer. We are not in the place where we can condemn and judge others. Because we took the fruit of knowledge of good and evil being deceived by Satan, that is why we keep on condemning and judging others. But as a mankind, we cannot condemn or judge others. Only God is the one that knows us. If you are 
if you have your sins forgave and are called blameless inside of Christ, then the people who are sitting here with us are the same. So do not judge or condemn others. Then how can we enjoy this gospel? Why must be the gospel and how can we enjoy this gospel? In verse 23, it is telling us the answer. Let us read together. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. How are you enjoying the gospel? Stay inside of faith. We must continue in the faith. What does this mean? Become the life where you really enjoy the grace and blessings that are given to you. The Israelites came out of Egypt. But those Israelites never stayed continued inside of their faith. Whenever problems came to them, they could not view it in the with the eyes of the gospel. And they just wanted to have uh, abundance and have no problems inside of the wilderness. But there was the Red Sea, there was the uh, the Jordan and the Jericho Wall. Everybody lost hold of faith. How was how are the Israelites in front of the Red Sea? Everybody resented against the leader and they said, let's go back to Egypt. But what did Moses say? You guys stay and see the work the Jehovah God will do. Moses stood in front of faith. Do you have problems? What kind of hardships do you guys have? Hold on to the word of God and stay and continue in the faith. That is how we can enjoy the gospel. And it says, stable and steadfast. Many people have the background of religion. And other people, they just follow after people. And some people root down inside of money. Their fields must become Christ. But because that's not the case, they fall down, they crumble down because of money, and they crumble down because of people. <clears throat> and many problems, people are crumbling down inside of the church. But this field, it speaks of Christ. So place your walk of faith on top of Christ. Because Christ is same in the past and today. So do not root down in anything else. Root down inside of Christ. And how can we enjoy this gospel? It continues. And not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. And he says, believe in the work. What is the work that God will do? That is the work to, that pertains to the kingdom of God. So whenever we view our children, we must view them as what will God do? So what, how God will lead me, that 
we call vision. So we must view other people the same way. What will God? What is the work of God that will be fulfilled through that person? And in the end, it says, "Do not lose." In verse 9, and so from the day we have we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdoms and understandings, so as to walk in the manners worthy of the Lord. What is knowing? What God wants. When we pray, we are able to know God, and we are able to know what God wants. So, really, go inside of prayer of the gospel, and just go inside of the seven 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 prayer, and there, from there, we are able to know the will of God, and we are able to know God. Then, what is the will of God, and what is the plan of God? What is the plans that God has towards our church? It is the answer that we held on to. The will of God is prosperity, healing, and the two three seven missions. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you go inside of the will of God. If you really enjoy the gospel, there is nothing more greater than the gospel. There was uh, this was the message that Paul wanted to relate to the churches of Colossians. With the gospel, we can do it. With the gospel, it is enough. We don't need some kind of philosophy. We don't need unhealthy mysticism. All of the gospel is inside of Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May the new answers start inside of enjoying the gospel and knowing what the gospel is. Let's read 